Hey everyone, welcome back to Witchwood. Part four? Episode four. <laughs> Last time we finished off on the snake. So today we're going to look at the leech because we started that accidentally. La uh, last time, so that's where we're going to go this time. So let's change over to tracking that one. We need to go to the sick house west of the swamp. We can do that. But yeah, hope everyone's having a good day. It's been a um, fairly chill one for me. I um, I've been looking forward to getting back into this. Like it's a, it's a lot of fun. It is a really pretty game. Like I really like the art style and all of that. Uh, so the snake we did really well. Like, we sort of had everything we needed whenever we need it, which was quite nice. We'll see how we go with the, uh, leech. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we still have what we need, but we'll find out. But, yeah. Uh, we are trying to get to, I believe... Yeah, over there. So we'll go down through this way. Wait, no. Not this way. Up here. So, yeah. You guys will remember, basically, this lady's husband has gone missing. We don't know where. He went to get medical help and he hasn't come back. So, that's what we're trying to deal with. Uh, I think quickest way to get here is this way. If we come through here, just grabbing everything as we go... You never know when we're going to need it. Ah. Uh. As many frogs as we can get. I feel like frogs are important. But yeah, it's... There's a lot going on. But we're going to the sick house, which is where the leech is. We'll see what we can figure out. Hold it now. The sick house is full to the brim and festering with disease. Don't you know there's a deadly plague going around? A plague, you say? This is the first I've heard of it. Oh, it's terrible. It affects young and old, the healthy and the infirm alike. We're so swamped with patients, I can barely catch my breath. So what are you doing out here? Shouldn't you be inside, tending to the ill? But you've got so many bodies piling up. Someone has to bury them before they spread the sickness further. Drops a voice to a whisper, looking ashamed. It's gotten so crowded, I've even had to dump some in the swamp. That seems unethical. But don't worry, the leech is inside working on miracles on the other patients. They couldn't be in better hands. The leech, that's a doctor of this place? The best in the land. Don't dare think about how much worse it would be without her skills. I need to speak to her. I'm checking up on someone who came through here. Sorry, I cannot in good conscience allow a person of your uh, years to enter such an infectious space without a proper inoculation. But with all the patients, we're low on medicine. I'm afraid I don't have any to spare. Bah, what a simple booster shot made from anyway. Plenty of medicinal ingredients right here in the swamp. I'll go get them myself. Well, it's a pretty basic prescription. You bring me the components, I'll be able to mix and administer it. Then you can go inside. I need three milligrams of bug ichor, five grams of toxic thistle, and some lazy grass to numb the pain. Look at that. Not bad. There's the bug ichor. You place a sloshing jar of ichor in the nurse's hands. She inspects it suspiciously, but doesn't ask where it came from. Uh, toxic thistles. Snap off a few spiny thistles and pass them to the nurse. She's careful not to prick herself on the sharp ends. And then lazy grass. The nurse takes the dried grass you've been so careful to keep intact and immediately crushes them into powder. The nurse nods at you, gathering all the ingredients with a small hand-sized mortar. You hold your breath and she matches everything into a slimy, stinky liquid. Not the most pleasant stuff, but I can assure you it beats growing lumps where no lumps should be. Speak for yourself. One can never have enough lumps. The nurse shrugs at you, sucking up the bubbling mixture into an oversized syringe. She gestures for you to hold out your arm. Stabbing into your flesh several times, she fails to find any veins with the point of the needle. Sorry, you seem to have some strange physiology. Bah, give it here, I'll do it. Seize the injector and jab in your arm without further fuss. A cool sensation climbs into your fingertips. You doubt the medicine will have any effect, but at least it should make the nurse happy. There, I feel much better. Can I go inside now? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. You should be immune to the play for the time being. Just be quick. The leech is very busy. Oh, there's a chest over there. Nope, apparently not. All right, we can go and see the leech now. Oh, my God. This is horrifying. The leech. Presiding figure of this house of sickness. Something up. Crimson wine. Weaknesses unknown. 
Dr. Slivers from one patient to another, checking off little boxes on a clipboard. From under her wide-brimmed hat, she appears to notice you enter, but pays you no mind. You must be the leech. I was hoping you could help me find one of your patients. Do you have the symptoms? Crackling of the bones, oozing eyes, skin rot, perhaps a yellow liver? Let's get you examined. Leech extends her toothy snout, prodding your body and searching for some hidden malignancy. You slap her away with a swift palm. If it's sickness you're looking for, you won't find it on me. My dear, we're all sick with something, whether it's a broken heart or a broken arm. We all suffer in one way or another. You peer through her tightly wrapped garments and see a deep darkness underneath. Despite the warmth in her words, there is a sense of hunger and urgency in her tone. I am here to heal, to mend, to put all of your troubles at ease. Now tell me, what ails you? I told you already, I'm in perfect health. I'm here to find someone, a man who came through here with a sprained ankle. Half the patients who come to me have twisted this or broken that, before the pox sets in, that is. Can you be more specific? What does he look like? Oh, I, I'm not sure. Well then, how do you expect me to help you? Come back to me when you know what you're looking for. Look about the sick house at the coughing, wheezing, bedridden souls. Perhaps some of them will be able to identify the missing husband. Miss that man with beard. You don't know where that short fellow got to, eh? It's that beardy guy you're looking for. It's a fellow with dark hair, dark eyes. Sleeping looks like they could use the rest. Husband, yeah, he had a dark complexion than me. Can't find a short guy, sorry, I can't help you. I mean, that's him there, isn't it? Let's take all of these. Absolutely. Pages just stares in the distance or silent. Uh, is that? Well, do you have any better idea who you're looking for? Uh, shorter than most. I need a bit more than that. Uh, dark in features and had a beard. I remember that poor man now. He came with a swollen ankle, but on his journey through the swamp, he must have contracted the plague. His condition declined rapidly, I'm sorry to say. In the end, there wasn't much I could do except make him comfortable. He's dead? What sort of sick house is this anyway? My condolences, really. Now, if you excuse me, I have to get back to doing what I can for the living. At least tell me where his wife might collect his body. The nurse outside seems to be having trouble keeping track of them all. I'm sorry, that information is reserved for next to kin. Judging by your physique, I wouldn't say you're related to the deceased in the slightest. Doctor turns away from you to prepare files of medicine before return. Better return to the old woman in the swamp with the bad news. No, we can't do anything with this yet. At some point we will, but uh, this is not not the time. So yeah, he's absolutely just killing everyone, isn't he? Not ideal. Okay, so we need to head back to the uh, the old woman. And hopefully we'll figure something out after that. We'll do with more of these, just in case. Um, the leeches don't really give us much useful, did they? They gave us, like... Oh, they gave us uh, blood, and that was it. I'm not overly worried about anything there. All right. At least we're getting a lot of hag shrooms. I assume they're important. <laughs> okay, we're back. You have news of my husband? He should have been back from the sick house by now. You bow your head in condolence. Sorry to say your husband has passed away. Leech said he fell ill with the plague. Right in grief, an expression of mild annoyance crosses the woman's face. Oh, what a nuisance. You don't seem that upset by the news. Well, he was getting on in the years. I was bound to happen sooner or later. I just didn't think it would be from some measly plague of all things. So, where is the fool now? Not sure. Leech wouldn't tell me, but her assistant mentioned having to dispose of the dead out in the swamp. Ah, Brimstone and Bandersnatch. And I'm already in your debt, sister, but can I ask you for another favour? I suppose I've already stuck my foot in this mess. What is it? It's an old circle of power just west of here. It served me well in my younger years, and I expect it's still got some juice left. I need to dust it off and fire it again. I'll go do it myself, but by the time I get there, my poor husband's body would already be reduced to worm farts. What am I to do with this circle? You're a knowledgeable lass. The engravings on the obelisk should explain the rest. Yep. Well, we know where that is. We saw that last time. So let's uh, deal with that and find out what we need. I assume one of the things is going to be that Drake uh, tooth that we got. So hopefully we're a little bit ahead of the game here. But we'll find out. Uh, the essence of power wakes you to touch. Bringing I, I just skipped a whole sentence. 
You brush off a blanket of thick moss and lichen from the ancient magical pattern carved into the earth. The essence of power wakes at your touch, bringing slight warmth to your fingertips. Four black stone obelisks surround the ritual spot. You'll need to scrape off more overgrown decay to read the runic letters engraving the surface. Alright, what do we need? Collect a drake frame from the swamp. Some of the obelisks ask for a collection of bodily fluids to breathe new life into an unliving vessel. So, apothecary humors. The western obelisk requires a source of undead animation, a necromatic charm. Northern obelisk calls for proof of the dead. The afterlife is nothing if not bureaucratic. A death certificate from the leech would fit the bill. The east obelisk yearns for the tooth of a dragon. You haven't seen any real dragons in years, but who knows what's out in the swamp. We can do one. Drop the sharp retilian fang into stone basin with a heavy clunk. Spins like a top, emitting a high-pitched whine before shattering into fine white dust. All right, what do we need for the other ones? We need a necromantic charm, which needs... What is that? Pumpkin jack bone. So we need to go to the fields for that one. What was the other thing we need? The apothecary humors. We've got that. So we will need to go to the to the field. There's the apothecary humor. You fill the bowl with an offering of anam anatomic liquids. The fluid slowly disappears, have been drained by some unseen thirst, only until only the wet residue remains. All right, let's go see the leech. See if we can get this uh, death certificate. I think we got what we need to allow us to get the pumpkin jack bone. Hopefully, so we'll see how we go. This way. Go back to the leech. It's going reasonably well. Really? Like having two of those already was good. Uh, shadowy doctor prowls amongst the cots, eyeing the weakest patients with dark hunger. She snaps a quivering tentacle at you as you approach. Another step closer. Who knows what sort of disgusting melodies you might be carrying? Yes, yes, I'm a pox ridden wet wretch. I know, but I need a death certificate from you. Specifically, of the short bearded man we spoke about. His wife is in no condition to roll her chair through the swamp, so she's asked me to collect it for her. Don't simply give out death certificates to anyone claiming to be someone's aunt, grandmother, or friend. This is a legitimate operation. Turns back to you and rummages through a nearby medicinal closet. Now, where has that serum got to? Don't tell me we were out already. What's the matter? Out of stock? It's a shame you don't have time to go out yourself. Chances at your continued presence. What are you getting at? Medicine for that death certificate. I think that's a fair trade, don't you? You would bother when people's lives are on the line? Fine. You'll have your paperwork, you filthy degenerate. Clearly too angry to speak with you, she shoves a list of required medicinal supplies into your hands. Three mending pulses, poultices and a dragonfly wing. That's pretty easy, actually. One, two, three. We just need a dragonfly wing, which means I need a... Yeah, I've got a few of these. Nice. Let's go find a dragonfly, eh? This one's going well. We'll do this first, and then we'll deal with the, uh, the field... All right, keep an eye out for a dragonfly. There's one. Should be easy enough. Come up here. Drop that down, and he'll come back. While he's doing that, we can dig up some stuff. Eat it. Nice. There we go. That's everything we needed from him. It is useful having all the stuff we need. <laughs> Makes life a lot easier. Cool. So we can hand all of that in. Lucky we had some Sneeder Snoots as well. I love that. That name for the item, the Sneeder Snoot. Uh, here's the mending poultices. Leech stuffs the poultice into an unsanitary looking cabinet without a second glance. Leech takes the wings with a surprisingly delicate touch and lays them out carefully along the surface of a clear shelf. And then the Sneeder Snoots. Leech inspects the bars before placing each of them carefully into a velvet-lined container alongside other excruciating-looking instruments. Run your errands, and I really must insist on that death certificate. There's no need to get prickly. I have your papers right here. Leech extends her moist arm and thrusts a poorly written note into your hands. You shake the mucus from the paper and try to decipher the loopy and illegible scribbles. Not even sure the leech spelled the poor man's names right, but you suppose it's better than nothing. But next time I need a doctor's note, I'm better off forging the signature myself. Cool. Out of here. Now we can go to the field. Grab the, uh... Grab the... What was it? Pumpkin Jack Bone or something, wasn't it? Pumpkin Jack Bone. Alright. But yeah, progress. So, there's 12... There's 12 that we need to get. And really, we've got... 
two done. This will be our third, so we're making good progress. Like, I am liking that we're getting sort of an episode per per uh, thing. It makes it sort of fit quite well. Hope you guys have all been enjoying it. It's a, um, it's a really cute game. So we're just running down here. Just running all the way. We could do with more Skeeter Snoots. We might keep that in mind as a thing that we do need at some point. But there's nothing too drastic that we're looking for. Just going to keep making our way downtown. We probably need more lard and stuff. I do feel like we're at some point it's going to ask us for... Um, for another fire or like to take care of a um take care of a dryad again at least we've did I use that dried heart I think I've still got a dryad's heart so that's good at least do I need all these probably not do I want to make sure I have them in case yes oh, yeah no I If you're looking for a cozy game, this is actually quite, quite relaxing. Just running around and collecting stuff. Uh, let's collect this stuff while we're here, just because we have used a fair bit of it. I don't know. I, I feel a little bad just uh, capturing fairies, but still. There we go. A few more things, just in case we need them. Let's go to the field. We haven't been here for a little while. Uh, so there's with the ball. Oh, that's... That must be a portal. That looks like... So that's the ox, which we're not dealing with yet. Unusual hay bale definitely looks like a... Uh... Upon closer inspection, the mound of hay appears to have been deliberately woven into an intricate wickerwork structure. Carefully pluck a single piece of straw from its center, and the whole bundle begins to swell and unravel until the gaping vortex opens before you. There we go. Uh, oh, we need more of those guys. We definitely need more hoppers. Oh, I see. We were actually lucky and had collected the um, lazy grass last time we were here. That's useful. Not going to complain about that. Um, cow. What do we got? That's the ox's farm. We don't want to go there yet. I do like that we've got the uh, new portal. Oh. Do you give me eggs? Peasant? No. I didn't get an egg from him. Oh. Peer through the hedgerow and see ramshackle encampments strewn with plunder. Cut person brigands pick their nails with dangerous looking daggers. Got nothing to gain from the rest of the nest and nays. Better make myself scarce before they, before they see me. Let's camp back to the safety of the road. Okay, so that must be part of the Ox's quest, then. Have a look around here. Oh, no, he's angry. Run. Bomb hand. Oh, that's the wrong button. Are you a pumpkin, Jack? Snag vine. Cool, cool. We definitely have what it takes to make those. Oh, my God, we've only got one. We should have picked up more Skeeters. Come on, come on, come on. Come over here. Both of you. Can I get both? That'd be great. No, I can't. Uh... Alright, cool. We got... What we needed, right? One of those. And one of those. Nice. Let's see if there's anything useful in here. Doesn't look like it, but it's a good way around. There is a house, though. Okay. Well, we can use the teleport, actually. Like, we don't have to run back. So we'll come down here and do that. There's the start of the ox quest. We've got the... Yeah, we've got everything we need. Yeah, down below. There it is. How useful. Let's go through here. 
and then we can go to the swamp. Thank God for a fast travel hub, eh? Ah, it's down that we have to go. Easy. This one wants a necromantic charm. Place the token on death into the basin. It floods like a candle for a moment before a shadowy umber of the obelisk snuffs it out. And this one, death certificate. Humid swamp air has made the paper of the death certificate soft and damp. As you drop it into the bowl, it decomposes before your eyes until nothing is left. With the final offering is accepted, the obelisk surrounding the circle begins to hum. You can hear a strange melody playing through their discordant tones. Carvings on the ground burn with renewed energy, driving away the overgrowth. You're quick to step away as you feel a vacuous force pull at the circle centre. I suppose that's done the trick. Let's see what the writing has to say for itself now. You rotate your head to read the glowing letters on the edge of the circle. Hmm. Place the vessel of the deceased, yada yada, recite the evocation, necodermis, blah blah, apply the canopic ointment. Right, seems straightforward enough. All they need to do now is go fetch the body of that poor fool husband. He should be in the swamp somewhere. Um, we might make two of these and get some skeeters when we run past them because I feel like we're going to need them. But I'd like to get, like, more than one if we can. Let's find the husband's body. Oh, down. All right, we're, we're frozen on the map again. This does happen. Come on. Just let me back in. <laughs> All right. Like, the PlayStation's fine. Just for whatever reason, it doesn't like the map sometimes. Uh, down here, maybe. Nope. We have to search for it. I see. It's alright. One is not enough. We need more than one if we're going to use these. Oh, he must be, yeah, over in this area with all the bodies, eh? This must be where that nurse has been dumping the surplus of corpses. I'll need to take a closer look at each one to find the right fellow. Similar, perhaps, but not the right body. No, give me the thing next to it. I want the embalming. This isn't the right one. Not this one. Surely I don't have to go past the... Uh... Oh. Where on earth is that stinking body? You think I'd be able to find him among the dead here? Watch a particularly bloated fly land on a rotting hand poking out of the muck. Its disgusting proboscis probes at the withered flesh. Two globular red eyes slowly unglue themselves and swiggle, swivel to boggle at the insect. A huge slime-covered tongue lashes out and pulls a hapless fly into a gaping, toothless maw, along with most of the sunken corpse. Well, I ex suppose that explains where my misplaced man went. Speak to the Frog King in the swamp. Hello, Frog King. Croak, can it be? Has a lovely young morsel wandered its way into my palace? Call this filthy bog a palace? He throws his head back, shaking the swamp with burbling laughter. Smaller frogs and newts scurry out of the way to avoid being crushed by his enormous bulk. Ha ha ha. Wouldn't you? This place is a veritable bounty of insects, and my subjects have such healthy appetites, so they will all grow big and strong. I'd eat you too, but that head of yours looks much too hard. I prefer my food to be nice and tender. Uh, look, you wouldn't perchance have seen the old man pass through here, have you? About yay high, full beard, deadish? Frog taps his finger against the log, grinning an impossibly large grin. Oh yes, I do believe I've seen the chap. It's such a delectable aroma, and fall off the bone ribs. But I'm sorry to say that once something goes down the hatch, it never sees the light of day again. We'll see about that. I'm sure I can come up with some just desserts for you. Frog rolls his eyes. All right, digestive tablets. That's pretty easy. Oh, God, what do we need? Eye of Newt and Goblin Snot. All right. So we need a Newt, which means I'm going to need that. Where do we get Goblin Snot from? Okay, let's find a find a Newt first. That's That's the first step in all of this. Which we found them by digging stuff up. So that's that's our first thing is Oh, there's one. Uh here you go. Got him. Couple of iron newts. Alright. What else do we need? <laughs> Digestive tablet. We need goblin snot from the forest. Alright. Have we seen goblins? 
So here's the forest. Are the goblins the... Are the goblins the, um... Guys that were defending... Oh, that's a dryad. I don't want to deal with you. Ow. Okay. It's kind of my fault, but still. Alright, so we know there's one up here, I'm pretty sure. Let's just have a look at what it tells us we have to do with them. Like, are you a goblin? Yes. Dreadful doll. Oh, no. Oh, we need mosquitoes. Alright, we can go to the swamp and get that. We're right here. And luckily we got a few things to get them. So we know there's a few here. Just grab all this stuff. Try to get a couple together. There we go. And we can get the other one as well because we're here. Nice. Alrighty, back we go. So, I'm annoyed. Clearly, I uh, clearly I have done this once before. We know that, but I didn't get the thing from them. So that was a mistake on my part. All right, dreadful doll. Get the goblin. Come on. All right, we got goblin snot. That means I can make the digestive tablets now. Do not eat these unless you would very shortly like to have that action undone. Useful against turkeys. Have to keep that in mind. Because we haven't actually dealt with turkeys yet, which means that's something we definitely have to do. So what we need is goblin snot for that again, wasn't it? Yeah. Just goblin snot we're missing, so if we can... Excellent. That means I can make another one of these, can't I? Yes. Ah, oh, no, we need hopper legs, but that's fine. It means we have the gear we need when we get there. Just grab everything. I'm surprised he doesn't care that I just captured one of his uh, subjects. Stuff like this, like, hopefully we can avoid having to come back to them coming back, you know? Alright, here you go. You wrap a juicy looking grub around the medicinal tablets and offer it up to the Frog King. Your Majesty, I really must find the whereabouts of that gentleman. Perhaps this small tribute will persuade you to loosen your tongue. Frog gold sound the tantalizing meal without a thought. Ah, delectable gift. Thank you, my pretty. Now, I already told you where... There's not such flair for a moment. Then he sneezes, sending specks of wet mucus flying. Frog's throat suddenly expands, filling with gas. The belch that erupts from its lips resonates so loud the entire swamp ceases its buzzing. You've hurt your eyes, but the noise and smell of the frog's close eruption almost locks you off your feet. Great Glinda's ghost. What a stench. The frog wobbles and legs looking thoroughly empty. He teeters before rolling his huge body back into the swamp with a thunderous splash. You spot the slippery body of the husband floating in the bog water. Luckily, he seems to be missing some bits and pieces, so he should fold up quite nicely. Well, we got him. We got frog slime for that as well, apparently. Oh, avoid them. Here we are. Put the corpse, the corpse in. With considerable effort, you unfold the husband's decaying body from your satchel and slap it down the middle of the circle. Visible shackles rack around, wrap around the corpse's limbs and pull it, spread eagle against the ground. Strange mists rise from the obelisk, casting everything in sickening green light. Slowly but surely, the corpse begins to levitate off the ground. It rotates to face each obelisk one by one. Oh, get on with it. I haven't got all day. You give the rotting head a good kick as it passes by you. With a gasp of sail air, the body drops to the ground. Suddenly, it bolts upright. Gah! Well, hello there. Gah, kick. You caused me a lot of trouble, you know that? The re reanimated corpse claws at its throat. Oh, sorry, wait a moment. Near your feet, you see a disemboyed tongue flucking around on the ground like a worm. You scoop it up and quickly toss it in the man's gaping mouth. Black. When moves his jaw, his lurching voice seems to emanate from someplace beyond. Murderer. What? I am not. You were quite dead when I found you. No, Leech murdered me. Clutches a hollow chest if you're trying to feel his heart beating. Gave me plague, drained my blood. Leech murdered others. Swings a limp arm towards the body field dog. I knew there was some awful stink about that sick house. What sort of doctor infects her own patients? 
Check her office. Fine proof. Don't you worry. I'll make sure that parasite gets what's coming to her. She'd head back home. Your wife is worried half to death about you. Turns looks longingly over his shoulder. You can hear his vertebrae popping. Yes, I late. As he shambles into the choking mist, he gives you a crooked nod of thanks. I mean, I don't think any of us are surprised at that, are we? <laughs> I think we all saw that one coming. But I reckon that's what we need. We'll find out. So yeah, I'm hoping the ox won't need too much stuff because it seems like the area the ox is in is not too big. But we'll find out. At least we're starting to unlock some fast travel. Go to the office. While Leech is busy with her patients, you rival through the contents of the various cabinets in her office. Mostly dried herbs and potions. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. That is until you notice a suspicious looking bookcase set against the wall. The books are all fake. Just chopped down spines glued to a solid plank. Fingers race across medical tiles and quickly find a loose volume. With the click of a switch, the whole bookcase swings open to reveal a secret compartment. Your heart jumps at the sight. Racks upon racks of bottled blood are arranged like fine wines. Each vessel meticulously catalogues the name, description, and age of its source. Looks like that thirsty slug's been sapping the living for years. On the nearby table, you spy a decanter half filled with ruby red liquid. You wonder whose blood it contains. Hmm. A dash of salt would remind that slimy worm that there's worse things out there than bloodsuckers. Salt the leech's wine. Means we need one of these. And we can make that. And then we spritz it. Sprinkle a generous amount of embalming salts collected from the graves of leech's victims into the decanter. As the salt dissolves into the bloody cocktail, you hear the telltale squelching good doctor's approach. What are you doing? Can't you see this is my private office? I already helped you enough, so there's no reason you ought to be here. She hastily shuffles you out of the room. Now get out, this place is only for the sick. You're certainly right about that. You walk just out of sight before doubling back to hide behind a weathered get well bouquet. Peer at the vexed leech as she slips around the office, checking every cabinet and looking for tampering. She wants something expletive about nosy old women. Satisfied, she sighs relief and reaches to pour herself a glass from the tainted decanter. Ah, the addition of black fever adds a certain nutty quality. Maybe we'll pair well with an infusion of peat moss palsy in the next batch. Take a sip, waiting just a moment before throwing her head back and guzzling it all down. Mmm, lovely sharp flavour, full body too. Suddenly, the leech snaps to attention. Her limbs dart out, writhing with an uncontrollable gestures. She stabilises herself against the table as sweat pools on her brow. The decanter shatters against the floor in an explosion of glass. What's happening? Leech spasms as the tendrils of ghostly spirits begin to suck the moisture from her body. You watch as she dwindles in size, shrinking like some horrible raisin. Did it. Speak the mummified worm, pressing it between your fingers lightly. Drained by the very spirits she was supposed to be healing. Your fingertips, you make out the faintest of heartbeats, the soul of the leech. Nice. The leech. Quest completed. So, that is three out of four of our first, uh... Yeah, three out of four of the first group. We're doing well. That means next time we will be dealing with the ox. We'll be going to the we'll be going to the uh, fields to find out what's going on there. But that will happen next time. Until then, thank you for hanging out. And as always, we'll see you next time. Bye guys.